folks, how we doing? You know, I got some good news today, all right? And we're gonna do a video that we've done before, but just the current version of it, all right? The 2023 edition. And I say it's good news because a lot of folks are sending me emails, inquiries, messages, whatever it is. What should I get on my new tractor? What options should I consider? What new tractor should I get? Comparisons, this, that, the other thing, right? Which is great. And the reason I say that is because, you know, you always get doom and gloom in the media, right? The sky is falling. It's easy to fall into that trap of, you know, we're heading to a recession and, and this, that, the other thing. But the reality is, is that there's still strong demand. And it's not demand like there was when it was through the roof that was unsustainable for the last couple of years. But as a business owner myself, I want to see what is actually happening, not just what I'm being told is happening out in some little fairy tale land. And so the reality is a lot of folks are out shopping for tractors still. Um, and even in the auto industry, right? And part of this is probably due to backups at other points in production, but Ford set a record, smashed it, sold almost 100,000 Super Duties it's either October or November. I think it was November they, they set that record. Almost 100,000 Super Duties in one month. Those things are like, I don't know, what's an average price tag on a Super Duty? 70 grand? A lot of them go for more than that, so that's pretty crazy. Anyway, so what I want to talk about today and and give you guys perspective, all you folks out there shopping for a new tractor, maybe it's going to be your first tractor, maybe you've already had a tractor, it's time to upgrade, but I had two more emails just yesterday or the day before that were the same thing. Uh, one was gonna buy a brand new tractor. Uh, he was deciding between a 4066 and a, and a, a 5065V or four series and a five series. He settled on the 4066, wanted to know what he should get on it when he's building that out new. The other gentleman uh, was upgrading. He had a 3033R, wanted to upgrade to a four series. Uh, his local dealer that he was working with had a 4044R and a 4052R. Some differences there, but the same price point. One was older, the 4052 was older. 200 hours, the 4044 was a 2022 and like 20 hours or something, um, but the same price. And so really this conversation applies to new or used, but the idea behind it is getting a tractor or purchasing it set up the way that you want. And a lot of us don't because we don't know any better. And there are solutions you can get afterwards that will set it up the way that you want, but they can cost more money. Uh, we do have partners that you can save money buying through as well. And so really this applies to new or used tractors. You just wanna have it set up the right way. And in a sense, that's really why we had the Summit tractor here behind us. So I'll tell you some more about that too as we go through this, but this applies to Kubota, John Deere, uh, Mahindra, Coyote, LS, whatever brand you're shopping, the same common sense approach applies. All right, so for some of you folks out there that you've seen these videos before, let me know, do you agree with what I said? Did you follow the advice? Did you go a different direction? What worked for you? If there's something I don't mention today that you think's worth getting, point it out, because that's important information for folks to know. All right, so we'll start at the front of the tractor, move our way back, and so we're gonna start out with the front end loader. All right, right up here, the business end, and you've seen the interchangeability. Forks, a pusher, a bucket, a grapple, a bale spear, probably other tools as well. There are other tools, I just can't think of them. You need to have a quick attach system and be that the John Deere quick attach, which is only gonna be on a John Deere tractor or they call it hook and pin as well. Everybody else will have a skid steer quick attach, two levers that you can pull and release your bucket. There's gonna be some funky systems out there too. Uh, Yanmar on some of the uh, certain series of Yanmar have their own specialized quick attach. We don't sell anything that's Yanmar quick attach uh, out of the gate. We can special order it. And we're talking about maybe having a, a stump bucket version that is Yanmar quick attach, but just get a skid steer quick attach. Just, just get a skid steer quick attach, just like the Summit has on it, you'll be good to go. Okay, just moving just behind it, you're gonna see a couple of uh, outlets right there. Those are gonna be third function or diverter outlets, and they're gonna be positioned up front because they're gonna connect to a grapple or an angling, a hydraulic angling snow plow, and you're gonna need that third function to operate those kinds of tools. And so the Summit tractor does come standard with that uh, third function up front, but most companies out there do not. There's going to be a couple here and there, uh, but most manufacturers don't. So you're going to have to add that on, take a look for the option. Um, it's not uncommon for it to be 1500 or 2000. You'll find a dealer here and there that'll be a bit less than that as well. If you need to get an aftermarket solution, go to Summit Hydraulics website. You can get a DIY solution, do it yourself at home. It's gonna be like a fraction of the cost. You can save 5% with code GWT. Okay, so one more item on the loader, all right? So this version here is a self-leveling loader or a mechanical self-leveling loader, an MSL. Mechanical self-leveling is what that means. And so as you raise, up and down, like if you have pallet forks, the best example, right? If you wanna lift a pallet up, 
um, you want to keep that level the whole time, no matter how high or low you're raising it. And the self-leveling option helps do that. It just, the extra brackets and the magic that, and the geometry on here gets that done. It is an extra cost. You know, there's some other benefits to that as well. If you're using a, a pusher or a bucket, for example, too, and you want to keep that, that level all the time and you're raising your loader up and down, you don't have to worry about the curl roll function. Just up and down will help keep it level too. Now I can make a case either way, you know, on getting a non-self-leveling or a mechanical self-leveling loader. Um, there's benefits to both and, and there's times that I, I'm happy to have it, there's times that I'm not. I've had a lot of tractors without it and it's the same thing, right? It's it's a nice to have feature. Maybe that's um, gonna be dependent on what your primary use is or your primary function. Uh, but either way, it's a nice option to have. It is standard on the Summit tractor included in the base price. Uh, something minor and actually is really not common on open station tractors. I don't know if it's available from any manufacturer on an open station tractor uh, besides Summit, but thinking more along the lines of cab tractors because um, that seems to be what most folks <laughs> are emailing me about lately are gonna be mirrors on your cabs, all right? And, and I don't think that those are standard. I'm sure there's some companies out there that do have them standard, but make sure you ask the question because uh, it is annoying. Like I just actually even, I bought a Polaris Ranger recently and my last two UTVs both had mirrors outside and it must not have been an option because I pretty much checked every option when I was buying this thing. And I don't have mirrors on there and it annoys the heck out of me every day. So same concept with the tractor, especially a cab tractor, make sure you're getting the mirrors added on. I used to buy and sell a lot of used tractors and in particular the cab tractors. I had many of them came in without mirrors on there. Maybe they just broke off, but I'm thinking they're not standard. Now the seat is an important one. You want a nice seat. There's certain series of tractors out there. The John Deere uh, 3E series, the John Deere 4M series, the Kubota standard L series, for example, those are all pretty basic tractor seats, not a lot of good suspension in there. So some of the more premium series of tractors will have a very nice uh, suspension seat on there, and that's what's gonna be included on the Summit tractor. There's an upgrade even from that on a lot of machines, which is gonna be an air ride seat, and uh, years ago, my opinion has changed on this, I used to not think it was worth um, the investment in that because it's not a cheap upgrade. I, I feel like it's $1,000 or more, to be honest with you. It's really expensive, but boy, the more time I spend on tractors, the older I get, um, the more I value comfort. And so that's where a really nice seat and suspension comes into play. And so if you can get that upgrade, I would seriously consider it because you gotta remember, you're hopefully not buying this tractor just for right now, but for years down the road as well. And it's gonna cost you more, no doubt, to upgrade down the road than it is to just do it right now. Okay, a couple of points to make down here. And talked about this recently as well on a L6060 that my buddy down the road is buying. I love these tires. I absolutely love the Goodyear Titan R14 tires. I put them on my John Deere 4 Series, which has the same tire size as the Kubota L6060. So if your tractor dealer won't do it, see if they'll work with a local tire shop and swap those out for you. You know, I have swapped out tires buying trucks, uh, from car dealers, even if they didn't carry those tires or work with that brand, it depends on your dealer. Some dealers are gonna be better to work with than others. That's just the breaks of the game. So the Goodyear R14 is gonna be available pretty much on, on this size machine here and on up. The Carlisle VersaTurf is what you're gonna see on the subcompact tractors, your 1025Rs, your Kubota BX. Uh, a typical size is a 26, 12, 12 on the rears. No matter which version you're looking at, they're gonna be taking the best of three different tread patterns. You're gonna take the R1 Ag tire, like the old school farm uh, tires that have the big V tread on there. You're going to take the R3 turf tire, which is obviously for turf and a very non-aggressive pattern. And then the R4 industrial, which is a thick bar tire. It's the most common one that you see out there in the tractor world today. Kind of integrates all those together and just makes a very good traction tire for all different kinds of conditions. If you're in mud, if you're in snow, if you're on your lawn, um, it's not going to damage the lawn unless you're doing something goofy to it. You know, you're gonna have the best chance for traction in those off-road conditions and nasty conditions as well. Tires are something you do not want to overlook. You really wanna give it a lot of thought and be a stickler about the pattern that you wanna get because they're gonna be very expensive to change out later on. And if you go with the R1 Ag tire, for example, if you wanna to switch to an R14 or to an R4 down the road, you're likely gonna to have to replace the wheels as well. And so it becomes even more expensive to do so. And the same thing can be said, if you start out with turfs on some tractors, you're gonna to have to get different wheels to go to the R14 or to the R4 or anything else. 
So anyway, th these have been out for a couple years now, I think, and so there's a lot of reviews out there on them. So check the forums, read Tractor by Net, you know, make a post on Green Tractor Talk, whatever it is, and get feedback on there on what other people are thinking. You're gonna have folks always that say, well, I don't know, my whatever pattern works great for me, but it's a big investment, so just do your research. All right, so of course, you're not gonna see the rim guard liquid ballast or beet juice inside these tires, but this is a critical ballast weight component and I think something that virtually everybody should get unless there's a real reason not to have it. Tractors in general are tippy front to back, okay? So if you're lifting a heavy load with your front end loader, the back end just normally does not have enough weight. So you need to add more weight onto it, a significant amount, a thousand pounds or more even for a little subcompact tractor. So if you're new to our channel, I am a big proponent of tractor safety. I'd feel guilty otherwise if I didn't preach about it. So I want you guys to be safe out there. Get liquid ballast inside your tires. A great option to consider and pretty much, pretty much every tractor dealer out there is gonna offer some form of liquid ballast to put inside there right up front. So, and some won't sell without it, all right? Some are not even gonna allow a tractor to go out their door without liquid ballast in their tires. It's not only gonna help keep your tractor planted to the ground, but if your tires are on the ground, then you have better traction, right? And you're gonna have better loader performance. So it's just a good thing all around. Add more ballast weight to the backside, to the three-point hitch when you can wheel weights if you need to. So the Summit Tractor is gonna be one of those companies that comes standard with RimGuard inside the tires, and we are actually sponsored by RimGuard. That's how serious I take tractor safety. I want everybody to know about it. You know, I was just telling Chris, I don't know how the heck, there's a lot of dirt on this blower, but, uh, and I, I don't think I, I got it marked pretty good. It must have just been dirt that's on the driveway, but it's all melting off now. It's, it's supposed to be 50 degrees today and uh, middle of winter and go figure. So anyway, next point, rear remotes, all right? so. If you can, get every single rear remote you can. That, that's what I would do. If, you, if, you're, if you're spending 50, 60, 70 grand on a tractor, like a four series tractor costs these days, then pay the couple extra grand or whatever it is and get all the rear remotes on it that you can. Get the, the, the third function, the fourth function, the fifth function, the power beyond, just have it. You're gonna be grateful at some point down the road because a lot of the attachments that you can get for it are gonna require extra hydraulics. Or if you wanna get a top and a tilt kit, that's two hydraulic circuits right there. I mean, they just add up very quickly and I highly doubt you're gonna regret it. So, really quick, what a rear remote is. This is a rear remote, and this is not two, okay? This is not two rear remotes, this is one. You have to have flow that goes both ways. Hydraulic flow goes in and out, all right? So if you have, you know, I'll say this is a hydraulic chute rotation on this blower, and you push a lever that's up here on the tractor, you push the lever one way, and it sends a hydraulic fluid through all the circuitry and everything, and it rotates the chute one way. Well, hey, guess what? Now I wanna rotate it back the other way. You pull the lever back the other way, and the flow's gonna go the opposite direction. So that's one circuit there that's tied up for that hydraulic function. So that's gonna be separate from the function that you have up front as well, all right? So there's that separate grapple function that's up front, sometimes called a third function. You're gonna have your rear remote. Now you're gonna have mid remotes as well. You're gonna have two of them there in the mid remotes, which kind of think of that as the one and the two SCVs, or selective control valves, and so two of those outlets, which is one remote, controls up and down on your front end loader, so you can't sacrifice that. The other two outlets, which is the second remote, control the curl roll function of your bucket. And so that's why you need something in addition up front to run the grapple to open and close the jaws of the grapple. You still want to rock and curl the grapple, whether it's open or closed. So you need to have two functions to open and close it and rock and curl. And then if you want to raise and lower, whatever you have to pinch down and rock back, that's the third function there. So you have to have those three functions that all work in unison up front. You know, and I would say uh, something like rear remotes gets easier to justify with the more expensive of a tractor that you're looking at. Now, probably the granddaddy of them all, as far as options go, is gonna be a factory cab. And so, to me, a factory cab is one that it comes delivered to you from the factory with the cab on it, all right? And, and it's gonna have air conditioning and heat. It's gonna be just integrated right into the structure. The, the, the ROPS bar is taken off and the cab becomes your rollover protection structure that's on there. That's something you cannot add on after the fact. And, and yes, Curtis does have a cab, an aftermarket cab with um, heat and air that you can add to the Kubota BX line, I think it is, but that's, that's really about the only thing and it's not gonna have the fit and finish, um, unfortunately, like a true factory cab is where it's just, it's like, structurally sound, it doesn't rattle, it doesn't have that reverberation, that um, echo chamber kind of feeling inside there either. It's just a really nice <coughs> cab, but you're gonna pay. <coughs> June? <coughs> hey, hey, that's enough. Hey. 
no thank you. And I was reminded of that wonderful convenience just recently when I was blowing in a blizzard using this snowblower right here. And I, um, well, I was covered in snow by the end, all right? It was like minus 11 wind chill. The snow was blowing all over the place. And if Summit had, they're coming out with it. They're coming out with a factory cab version. But if they had the cab version, then you can sure bet I would have been inside it. <laughs> but I wanted to give this machine a shot uh, using the snowblower and see how it did. And it worked well. But man, it's hard to beat a cab, not just in the wintertime, right? For the, the snow and the cold and the wind and everything else and, and just having that heat in there. But the same can be said for the summertime with dust, you know, for, for allergies, um, for bees and other bugs and stuff you might get into that just sting you. For even the sun beating down on you, it's just nice to have that air conditioning and be out of that nasty stuff that's out there when you're brush hogging or doing anything else. So again, one of the main reasons that I chose to even feature the Summit Tractor on my channel is because of the good value that it is. And a lot of these options with other manufacturers are standard on the Summit Tractors. The skid steer quick attach is standard. The third function is standard. The self-leveling loader is standard. The R14 tires are standard. The rim guard is standard. The mirrors are standard. The rear remote is standard. But no matter what tractor you get, make sure you have it set up the right way. Don't have any regrets. So that's thousands of dollars that come standard that are not gonna be an upcharge compared to many other brands out there. So I thought it'd be a good time to address Summit's rollout plan and you can get more information on their website too. But a lot of folks are frustrated that they can't get a Summit tractor in their area or there's not a servicing uh, dealership or technician in their area right now. And that is on purpose, all right? This is a controlled rollout where Summit is released and opened up in a certain small segment right now to prove out their all the kinks in their system, all right? And so they're to that point where they're getting ready for that stage two of the rollout. And again, you can look on their website and see all the, the retailers where you're gonna be able to buy this either now or soon, you know, coming spring of 2023, gonna be another launch phase of this, which is great. And they're gonna have not only just the, the retailers where you can buy the tractor, but they're also gonna have the locations on where you can have it serviced too, because that's the idea is they don't wanna sell these tractors and just have them for sale all over the country if they aren't yet set up. And so they're going through, they've hired all sorts of technicians, they've trained them, they're to that point for the distribution to scale that up. And so while frustration is never a good thing, um, to me, I, I kind of view it as a good thing just because there's a lot of demand for the tractor out there. So that's um, a reassuring feeling to know, but I get where you're coming from as a consumer. I, if I see something that I want it, I wanna buy it now as well, but just know that Summit's looking at this from the right angle. They don't wanna just get you a tractor, say you're up in Maine and they don't have anybody yet that's servicing you. They don't wanna sell you a tractor up there and not have the service there available and ready to support you if you need it. So be patient, it's coming soon, I promise. Just keep tabs on their website, Summit Tractors. You'll get all the information you'll need. So that's gonna do it for us today. If you did enjoy today's video, you wanna see more about tractors in the future as you start your tractor journey, we'd love to have you tag along. Hit that subscribe button right down below. And if you need an attachment for your tractor, we want to help you out. We sell and ship tractor attachments all over the country every day of the week. Check out goodworkstractors.com. If you don't need an attachment, but you still want to rock some GWT swag, check out our merchandise. It's all made to order. It'll ship direct right to you. We don't keep any of those profits. They all get donated right to charity. Thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by. And until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon. Yeah.